The problem is the bad understanding of language, said Clarence Ford. It is important to acknowledge that we have many languages of the same value. Afrikaans has its rightful place, but is no more important than the other indigenous languages. He points that Afrikaans is not the language of oppressors, but indeed the language of the oppressed. Language has played a very sad role in, in the history of, of our country. Um, let me tell you, it wasn't white people that spoke Afrikaans. The white people that came here spoke Dutch. They were of Dutch origin. It was the slaves out in Batavia, in, in the Malaysian archipelago, that developed this language Afrikaans. So you'll find elements of Arabic in Afrikaans. You'll, it's a Creole language. It is a bridging language. It was a means to talk to uh, the slave masters, to, to those that had captured the slaves. It was a means to negotiate. This sensitive issue makes people blood boil. Not only Afrikaans, but all languages should not be used as a tool for exclusion in a post-apartheid. But how can we promote inclusivity at our schools and institutions of higher learning? Dual media meaning that there's use of both languages for teaching and learning in the classroom. So why can't we think beyond the binaries? Why can't we think beyond the silos of the languages? And um, our proposal in my work and, and my colleagues is that multilingualism should be the way to go because this is also what we are trying to negotiate at universities as a decolonial way of, of dealing with language issue in education, to have all languages to have to recognize that knowledge comes and presents itself in different languages. A solution would be creating the school language policies that allow students to act how they are, to show how different they are in the same space, so children can learn and live in a world of diverse. Marcelina Burzec, Our City.